this eagle perched up on the side of a mountain and a little a nest of little eagles and one of the eagles like a little teenager accidentally flew out of the nest and tumbled down the side of that mountain and tumbled and tumbled and tumbled and landed in a field below right in the middle of a flock of turkeys and they all looked at him like where did you come from but there's a mother turkey who took a liking to him and she adopted him and that little eagle grew up with a bunch of turkeys and one day one day he's walking in the field big old eagle walking in the field and he walks under this tree and he hears who who and he looks up and there's an old wise owl up there and the owl goes who and the eagle goes who and the owl says yeah who you don't know who you are you're not a turkey you're an eagle you don't belong down there you belong up there and that turk that eagle looked at himself and spread his wings and went foof, 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 and took off and began soaring in the sky and we as members of the body of Christ you don't belong down here you belong up there you're already seated with Christ in heavenly places we are the only people in the world who can look at this world from a different vantage point than everyone else we're the only people in the world who can look at it with the eyes of understanding and know exactly what's going on and rather than getting discouraged about it and frightened about it as we look down on this scene as it's unfolding before us we can do so with a sound mind and say this is exactly how the dispensation of grace is supposed to end Yeah. That's how we look at it. You know, I left my house after that and I went to stop and shop and I got to tell you, I was floating above there. And as I'm walking in there, I'm like envisioning myself looking down on this whole thing. Because that's the proper view for a believer. What are many people doing though that believe? they're they're trying to make it not happen they're trying to stop what is happening from happening because they're not looking at the world from the right vantage point they're looking at it rather than from a bird's eye view they're looking at it from a turkey point of view and that's all they can see when you're looking at this from the right vantage point you know what you can see you look at it from here and you can look down and you can say to yourself who can i rescue from this sinking ship that's what you can do not what can i do to patch up this sick this sinking ship and keep it from sinking no folks this ship is sinking this ship is sinking 
and you're on it. So what can I do to rescue some of the people who are inevitably going to die in this ship and go to hell? What can I do? See, when you leave the lofty perch of your position in Christ from where you can view the scene that's unfolding before you with clarity and you come down into the field where you're surrounded by a bunch of zombie turkeys who have no idea who you are. They have no idea what you're doing here in this world because they don't know what they're doing. But they don't have any idea what you're doing. And then you, you join them and you double their confusion in, in their efforts to patch up the sinking ship that we're all on. I mean, if you're involved in the mess this world is in and you're trying to fix it, here's one thing that you're not doing in this war. Second Timothy chapter 2, Paul said, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a, sol shoulder, a soldier. Are there affairs going on around us that have caused you to take your eyes off the goal that is set before you? I mean, how many of you are listening to me, both here and online, that have forgotten that you are in a spiritual war, but now you're entangled, you're more entangled in the affairs of this life? Don't raise your hand. I know some of you, some of you are. You know, there's a group in the Old Testament and you can be thankful that what happened to them will not happen to you. It's found in Judges chapter 5 and verse 23. The Bible said, Curse ye Miraz, or Miraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof. Why? Because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. When you get entangled in the affairs of this life, spiritually, you become useless, as useless as all the people who are involved more involved in political events surrounding them than the work of the Lord. You have become entangled. Have you ever put away some rope? Put it away nicely. Yeah. And you come back there one day and you try to find the end and you can't find it. When you pull it, ah! Next thing you know, you're, you're entangling. You're, that's especially true with fishing wire. You ever had a fishing wire that got you? You have to throw it away because it becomes useless. You start unwinding it. You can't do it. You get a bird's nest. You know, in that condition, a rope or a fishing line or an electrical cord are all useless until they're untangled. Every single one of them. So Paul said, no man that warreth entangleth himself in the affairs of this life. And I submit to you that if you are entangled in the affairs of this life, you are useless for the Lord.